to introduce you to the concepts of working with these singly with linked lists, we're going to start by implementing a mutable singly linked list, and we're just going to have it implement our interface. So it's going to be somewhat like this diagram here, except we're not even going to bother uh, keeping a tail. And the reason for that is that the methods that we put inside of our trait don't benefit from a tail. The tail is beneficial if you have a specific method that can add to the end of, of the list, and that's a common use case. We don't have a method. I mean, technically, insert can be used to add to the end of the list, but insert's the only way you can, you can add things. Uh, but if you don't, you know, uh, if you insert works for anywhere, so you don't necessarily know that that's where things are going. So I'm just going to create another class that implements this. It's going to extend this uh, trait, and we'll have to put these methods in it. <clears throat> we'll look at other ways that we could build the same type of thing in a later video. Um, so we're going to call this what singly linked list. It has the type parameter A, and it's going to st extend our list ADT of A. Now remember I called this list ADT instead of just list because list is a name that's already taken by the Scala libraries and in fact is used in many different places and so I I don't want to run into conflicts there. Okay. We can make this at least happy enough to compile. Okay. So what do we need inside of here? Well, if you look at the image, we have all these little pairs of boxes. And when I was drawing this, I referred to these as nodes. Indeed, we want to have a class that represents one of those pairs of boxes. And it can actually be private because no one else needs to know about it. It is an implementation detail of our class that no one else needs to, to worry about. I'll call it node. Uh, and it's going to, it needs to store the data and it needs to store the next pointer, data and next pointer. Those are the two little boxes that we drew there. And both of these need to be vars. And the reason for that is because these other methods, so for example, update is going to mutate the data in a node. And things like insert and remove are going to wind up changing our next references. So data is of type A, next is of type node. So a node refers to the next node in line. The other thing that we have to store in here is the head of, of our list. So for an array, we would have kept track, this were an array-based list, the two pieces of, of data would have been one thing that actually is the array, and then I would have kept track of a size for how many things I was actually using. I don't have to do that here, but I do have to keep a reference to the first element of the list. And now I could use an option type here, but I'm not going to, and part of the reason is because the option type does introduce at least a little bit of overhead and really doesn't help us all that much in this particular case. A lot of times when you're writing library code, you'll find that you, it's more common to use things like null than if you're not writing, uh, if you're writing kind of more general code. Okay, so how does this work? Well, probably the easiest method to, to write here is the apply method. Uh, when we call apply, we are supposed to go through the list and make sure or and, and give back the value that is at that particular index. So if I asked for sub three, sub zero, sub one, sub two, sub three, we would have to walk through, get to this node and return the data for that node. Okay. I also want to make sure that the value that's passed in is greater than or equal to zero. If someone asks for a negative value, that should that should not work. Um, 
So by putting in a requirement that the index is greater than or equal to zero, we'll make it so that this crashes if, if it's not. Uh, and this is unhappy with me currently because it's, it's not returning type A. Yeah, type mismatch. Okay, so how do I walk through the list? Well, the way that I normally do this, I'm gonna declare a var and I call my var rover because it's going to go roving and walking through the list. Uh, and it starts off on at the head, which is index zero. And then I need to run through a little for loop here that goes from zero until that index. So if the index was zero, this loop wouldn't happen at all. Okay, if it were one, the loop would happen one time. If it's two, it'll happen two times, etc. And each time what needs to happen is I need to move rover forward. So rover is initially equal to head. It's pointing here. The first time through the loop, I need to make it point here. The second time through the loop, I need to make it point here. The third time, I need to make it point here. So I need to set rover equal to the next pointer of the current rover. And we can say that in code by saying rover equals rover dot next. So I get out the next element and I set that to, to be the new rover. And when we're done, rover should be pointing at the right element and we just give back its data. Okay, so that's an implementation of apply. <clears throat> what about update? Well, it turns out I have the same requirement that update has to have a, uh, a non-negative index. And it's actually gonna look very, very similar. I need to start at the beginning and walk through, same thing we did before. But now when I'm done, I've, Rover is once again pointing at the node at that index, but I need to change its data, not give back the data. I wanna change Rover's data and set it equal to the data value that was passed in. Once again, fairly simple. Uh, we could actually think about how to simplify this, this code so that we aren't duplicating stuff. Um, but for the time being, I actually think there's a benefit to some of the duplication for students learning how to deal with lists so that you can kind of see and understand how the, the list manipulations work. What about inserting? Well. I'm gonna start with my same require. You can't insert at negative values. And the index that we pass in is going to be the index that this element is going to be placed at. Now, once again, and the reason why I suggest students learn how to draw these pictures, we showed how to do that for a node that was here in the middle of the list. But it turns out this method has a special case. Uh, the special case is what if the index we're, we're inserting at is zero? Well, that means that it needs to go before the seven here. That's a special case because that alters head. All, inserting anywhere else, anywhere after zero, is changing a next pointer. So when we inserted the five, I wound up altering two's next pointer to point to there. So the building a node and making it point to something, that's going to be the same no matter what. But for the inserting as the first element, I have to change a head pointer, not a next pointer. And that's a special case, and so I need to have an if for that. I need to say if the index is equal to zero, then I am going to alter the head to be a new node that stores our data and the old head. Okay. So once again, going back to the picture here, I would build a new node. That new node points to the previous head and then it changes the head to point to it. So when you do an assignment like this, it actually has to execute the code on the right-hand side first. It has to build this new node before it can assign that to what's on the left-hand side. So that one line of code does what we need it to. That's the entire thing for inserting at the beginning of the list. What if we're not inserting at the beginning of the list? Well, then we need to walk through our list and find the right place to insert something. Well, that sounds a whole lot like our code to make a rover and walk through.
through. But there is a difference here. Okay. The difference is, so let's so when I inserted the five, I inserted it at index two. So this was index zero, index one, index two. It became the new thing at index two. So where did I want Rover to point? So if I just walked up to to what had been at index two, the six, I would have actually gone too far. Because this is a singly linked list, remember we can't walk backwards through singly linked lists. We can only follow the arrows forward. So if I actually got to the six, I have lost the ability to insert the five before it. Instead, we need to stop one short. We would need to stop on the two and then do the insert after that location. So instead of going zero until index, I'm gonna go zero until index minus one. That way I stop one short and I need to build a new node. So I'm actually gonna type this in kind of in the way that it will wind up executing and the way we might think about it. I build a new node that has the data we're inserting and it's next. So our rover would have been here. The next would point to rovers next. Remember this is, we're assuming before the, the five had been inserted, two pointed all the way to six. And so we want this next on our new node to point to rovers next. The other thing that we had to do is we had to update rovers next. And so we can do that in a single line here, just like we did for our special case where we set the head equal to a new node that pointed to the head. Here we're going to set rovers next to a new node that points to the old rovers next. So that winds up inserting into the middle of a list. Uh, and then remove. We'll come back, I'm gonna do remove in the next video and then also talk about testing this because you know, there's enough code here, we need to make sure that this works. Once again, as we saw with our stacks and queues, the ideal way to do this is to actually write some unit tests for this and make sure that all of our methods are doing what we expect them to do.